Hey everybody, and thanks a million for clicking on this video. But before we begin, this Cat Icarus episode has been brought to you today by Big Ben Interactive and their new remake of the cult classic PC open world adventure game, Outcast, remade with passion and love by the original team to reboot the saga for the 21st century. Roughly 50 hours long and inspired by Star Wars and other sci-fi action movies, Outcast throws you into a vast and rich alien world open to you from the start, filled with mystery, interesting characters fully dubbed by real actors, and many background story details hidden away in each corner of it. The gameplay itself also still holds up magnificently today with many strategic battles, weapon and gadget combinations and choices you make and actions you perform affecting the world around you with the reputation system and how you deal with the inhabitants of the world. It's a cult classic for a reason, it's very atmospheric and very fun to play and it's awesome to see it revamped like this so please if you're interested go and show the game some love in the description below. Thanks again. I want to go on a journey. <sighs> what? Okay guys, I'm really, really sorry, but I can't redo the intro to the first crop video because it's winter now, it's not summer, and it's too cold, and I just have to think of something- <laughs> Fuck off, it's cold! I can't think of anything else that I have to do. Greetings and salutations, my beautiful people, and welcome to the Kanekura Show, where I always have to do the duty of deciding whether or not things deserve to be slaughtered or salvaged. And you can't just shut up for a second, can you? I, I'm just like I'm your performing monkey. I'm your dancing bear on hot coals. Well, I hope you're happy because your incessant whining. We're doing Croc Two today. So yeah, Croc Two. It's about four years late, but just ignore that. I covered the original croc after I got hundreds of requests, so now here we are, naturally onto its sequel. Now that I have thousands of requests for it. Oh, look, I'm sorry, the thing is I'm worried sick about covering this game. I got enough flack on the original video for simply saying croc 1 was just okay, so how you're all gonna feel about my opinions towards this game I'm practically shaking over. Let's get jammy. Play the gammy. We begin with another cute in-game engine cutscene, much like the first croc. No FMV, thank you. With a gobbo humming along to the croc theme while repairing a plane. It's all very sweet and nice, but then we cut to- A cool devil worship and the last boss from the first game resurrects as a zombie from the depths of hell! And then we have the intro theme. Okay, it's the same theme as before, but now it's got a trident tropical twist to it, which is oh so groovy. I really like it. What's my name? Well, that's obvious. <laughs> We get another cute cutscene following this as Croc is celebrating his victory from the first game at the beach, but this is totally ruined when I notice that this gobbo is wearing a bra which means it has tits, this isn't right. And then straight after that... <laughs> By the way, Croc 2, I think I should ask you, do you think you've completely ruined your cuteness at this point? Totally, totally, totally. Totally, totally. Seriously though, the original game's intro was simple, effective, showed off an origin story, introduced a bad guy, showed off how evil he was, and then let you sort it all out. Plus, it was constantly cute, with tons of baby croc scenes mixed in with sad, helpless, fluffy gobbos to get you immediately emotionally invested. Here, the boss is back, then you're on a beach, you get a message with a footprint on, you get flown away. That, that's it. I mean, it has more mystery than the first game, but it's nowhere near as cute or even slightly engaging. I don't know what's going on and I honestly don't care. Good start. Cock. Whoa, 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 wait a sec. Text? Text? There's dialogue in this game? What is this, a croc RPG? Well, I don't remember the last RPG I played where this happened. And I hate to be a grumpy git. Oh, who am I kidding? I love being a grumpy git. But this whole text thing was a terrible idea for a sequel, in my opinion. It's a weird change from the last game that didn't need adding. It doesn't add any depth or interest in character with all of the stupid baby sentences you have to constantly double take because you speak like an adult, and it's so unnecessary that it sucks all of the cuteness out of the simple squeaks and squeals from before, and makes it look like someone off screen held a gun to the gobbo's heads and forced the poor bastards to talk, but they just can't do it. Plus, whenever Croc speaks, he sounds like he can't breathe and is dying. It's not to mention some of the voices are just Aloha, 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 Aloha. But what about the actual game? Well, let's get down to business to defeat the Huns and get on with the controls. In the original game, they were... Flawed. Uh, yes, this is back. But in this game, they're just... Flawed. 
fish. Jumping in mid-air movement is a lot less heavy and easy to control before landing, and the tank control system from the original game has gone. But to give Croc 1 credit, at least the entire game was built around that control style for the most part. Now you have better controls that respond to your directions that you actually use, but put into a game that has not been built around it. Ever tried playing Mario 64 without being able to move the camera yourself? Because that's basically what you have here. The camera moves completely independently, but doesn't work alongside your new free movement, which I can't forgive even though it does sound very good to be. <laughs> and let's not forget, this is Croc after all, the most flawed game series in existence, so of course jumping in a platformer has a delay. Everything else in the game is perfect, moving, attacking, stomping, that all happens the second the button is pressed, but jumping for whatever reason does not happen the second you press the button and there's no clear wind up or reason for it. Croc leaves the floor quickly for sure, but only whenever he feels like it, even if you tap or hold the button. It's totally confusing and throws you off when trying to stay alive in the much more treacherous levels that will kill you very quickly. In the game you also need to spend more time filling up your bubsy meter? Hey. Whoa, look, Croc is branching out at least. Look at this high octane boat racing. Ambitious Croc too, very ambitious indeed. It's just a shame that it's... A lot of fucking toss. Okay, so boat racing is obviously not all you do in Croc 2. That would make the game way too good. An easy 10 out of 10. Argonaut needed to hold it back to make it fair on the competition. So you still have to run around levels, hang on monkey bars, jump and smash boxes, climb around, fly on balloons, all that good stuff. But now you're given specific missions like saving a singular gobbo from a cage, chasing a thief down who stole a bird, and... Oh, fuck off. You also have a hub world to explore connecting all of these levels together and levels that you need to revisit to uncover secrets. How do you uncover the secrets, though? Through collecting gems and going to... the shop. Aloha, aloha. Aloha, aloha. Yeah, well... Alama Hamala to you too. Look, I'm sorry, this entire shop system is pointless. See, you have to buy keys and coloured power-ups that can be used within the levels one time per purchase in order for you to reach some other part of the level. But what you'll need and when you'll need it, fuck no. And this wouldn't be a massive problem if these items weren't so bloody expensive. Unlike what this guy charges when he wants me to give him a good shake. I don't understand how the game expects you to afford some of these things comfortably without having a clue where to actually invest things into. Well, you can just go into a level, see what item you need, and then go back. Well, no, because the levels where they can be more open are still relatively linear, so you'll have to spend a long time beating the level just to see what you need to buy. So God forbid you spend the whole stage collecting everything to only reach the end of the trek with a power pad for an item you don't have have because then you'll be heading back home spending the money and going right back through all of it again with no spyro style shortcut to the end to loop the level around some levels even require more than one item for secret areas but which combinations appear is totally random and go oh, fuck off now i have to do the whole level again once i buy the right thing i might just cheat the game and collect the first five gems of level one and leave the level all over again and keep getting those five gems from the beginning of the level until i have enough to be safe on every item yeah it's cheating but at least I'm not an abandoned Yoshi game. I mean, at least the game looks all right, I guess. Like, I've seen better. It's rather flawed. The condensed texture detail from the original game and its more claustrophobic environments has gone. Since the game is a lot bigger than the first, to be fair, it's been compensated for slightly blander loads of colours that mesh together more and wider spaces. Gobbos are now not cute little fluffball sprites with 3D eyes. They're now totally polygonal and just look... Now they look like golden nuggets that have been left out in the sun for too long. And if you felt their innocently timid squeaking and pathetic cries for help were just too much cute for you in the first game, well now they're packing fucking TNT! Oh, and whenever you kill enemies with 3D eyes, you get a great sound effect and the eyes get left behind in a classic 40s slapstick cartoon style. It's really satisfying. <laughs> Luckily, the music is just as great as the first game, though. Even the remixes of tunes from the first game are great since they implement more genres and different instruments. You can tell this is where most of the effort went into for the presentation. What about health, though? Oh, yes, well, that's been made different as well. Since you have to collect gems to Boy stuff! This means that you no longer collect them to shield yourself from damage like in the first game and remain safe as long as you're holding one gem. Similar to the ring system in Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> now you begin with four hits. Three hits, that is, and then one more after you hit zero. Once you're dead, that is it. Either quit or start the level all over again. Sure, you can get more minimum health by dying. 
Nice. Staff and completing certain mission levels, but the chances of you actually getting hearts back to fill these in are ridiculously rare, making the game unnecessarily punishing whenever you miss a jump from a delayed input. Oh, fuck this. And whenever you do manage to find these tiny splutters of health hanging around in a level, you only use them once, get one hit back, and as soon as you pick it up, you lose it straight away again from bullshit you couldn't see. Oh, thanks game, that was fair. I right, pick up the TNT, jump over the barrels, throw this at the squid for ruining my chance to grab some health. Awesome, yeah, go and do it again, jump the barrels, perfect, and uh, Oh, come on. How was I supposed to know that barrel was randomly dangerous now? Why was it dangerous? When was fire ever a part of the fight? When did this even happen? Continue my game? No? Even going into a new game as with cheap mode active isn't fun. Sure, you can get unlimited gems to spend in the shop and see the number of people Bubsy the Bobcat disappointed keep growing, but all that does is get rid of one annoying aspect of the gameplay instead of fix anything at its core to make it more fun to play. I'm really bummed about this, everyone. Seriously, I am, because I wanted to get through as much of this game as possible and make an epic follow-up to my original Croc video, but I honestly can't be bothered. This game I thought was bad, man, and I honestly don't want to play it anymore. It's one of the most frustratingly disappointing sequels I've ever played, and I went into this one excited to see how much could have been fixed from Croc 1, but alas, it was not meant to be. You may think this is unfair, but fuck it, you know what? Life isn't fair. Croc 2 gets the slaughter. I can't even say that it's cute anymore, because it isn't. It's just irritating now they've tried too hard to make it cute. You know, not like young Caddy from the Croc 1 video. He pulls off cute effortlessly. <laughs> even if you love the original game and its sequel, I can't take away anything you almost feel about Yoshi, I mean Croc, but you all must admit that he disappeared because of more than capable competition. Croc, whether he was good or bad, just didn't stand out enough, especially by 1999's sequel, when we already had tons of offerings from Crash Bandicoot, Mario, Banjo Kazooie and many others. It feels about five years before its competition. And with that, Croc just fizzled away like a crocodile with no eyelids in the sun. And sadly, that's how Croc ended. Not with a bang, but a whimper. And I won't lie, despite me only liking the original game and really not liking this sequel, I'd like to see him make a resurgence. He's got more of a right than fucking Bubsy, at least. Memes isn't enough of a reason to make a game, people. Croc, for as flawed as a game series it was, did not deserve to die in the way it did. So someone, please, anybody, pick up Croc and get a PS4 game going, because I'd play it. And if anyone doubts that he's even worth giving another shot, and if he'll sell any copies at all, if Bubsy can do it, anyone can fucking do it. If it's your birthday today while watching this video, happy frickin' birthday to you, and please remember to stay beautiful. Hey everybody and thanks so much for watching this today and special thanks to everybody on the screen right now for donating to help keep the channel alive during YouTube's darkest times. Special thanks to the top tier supporters Omar Matu, Patrick Ferguson, Basil, Andy Ellis, Robert Alamsha, I Have a Portal Gun, Gamer Man, Oblivion Rising, Noxious, Kane Stewart, Ellen Rilpley, Kirsten B, QB, Nathan Young and Nicole Ganara. Thank you so much every single one of you.